My name is Carla Valentine. I manage the Innovate ND program through the state of North Dakota with the North Dakota Department of Commerce. Today I'm joined by Tom Nickel with Mobile, Mobile Recon Systems and Tom is a current participant in our program. And today he's here to discuss his experience in 2020 with the COVID-19 pandemic. So Tom, thank you for joining us. Thanks Carla, my you pleasure. Bet. So first off, give us a description of your company and how you got started. Sure. So we're a designer and manufacturer of unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs and often called drones. And uh, we like to refer to them as UAVs because our emphasis is on, is on ones larger than ones people typically think of to carry a GoPro camera. Uh, ours are comfortable with payloads anywhere from five to up to 250 pounds. Uh, we started in Kentucky with two founders there who worked on the initial designs for uh, several years. And then two years ago, we began looking for an environment with a strong ecosystem for drones uh, and found it here in North Dakota. So with funding support from the state and from the city of Grand Forks, we decided to make the move here. And since early this year, we've had our headquarters here in Grand Forks. Well, welcome to North Dakota. We're happy to have you. Thanks. You bet. So tell us how COVID-19 has affected your business and what has been your response? Yeah, so just as we were getting started in North Dakota, the shutdowns due to COVID-19 began. And so that made things quite interesting for a while. The uh, uh, really breaks down to three factors. Uh, one is we have faced some immediate supply chain disruptions, for example, we had a vendor in Kentucky this before we were able to line up uh, partners here in, in North Dakota. They were fabricating metal components for us using our airframes and they ended up being shut down for at least 90 days. So we didn't have any ability to get uh, parts for R&D units or finished goods, either one. <clears throat> and then uh, some of our components come from China as well and those were delayed for weeks, sometimes months. So uh, we've had to adjust to that. Uh, second, for at least 90 days, uh, potential customers were not thinking about purchasing UAVs at all. They were focused on, on how to adjust to the situation, in many cases, just even survive. So that uh, set our sales efforts behind. And then third, our initial marketing plans were really heavily weighted to participating in trade shows. And all plans mm -hmm. to exhibit or attend those have been postponed. Some have, have gone virtual, but it's just not the same thing when, when you're a new company introducing new products. And that's all postponed well into 2021. So how we've responded uh, is <clears throat> on the sourcing front, we focused on local sources for components. Uh, we've been planning on doing that anyway, but the COVID situation really uh, accelerated those plans. And we've been successful finding some in Grand Forks, uh, others in North Dakota, over into Minnesota, others across the U.S. And it, uh, so, so we've really accelerated plans we already had in place to localize and, and move to uh, onshore providers. On the marketing, we shifted that strategy to focus more on working with strategic partners that we can easily meet with, uh, rather than relying on traveling to, to meet face-to-face -face for sales meetings or for trade shows. And then we've focused on continuing to improve the products. Since sales have been delayed, we've really focused on listening to customers whose relationships we're cultivating and making sure that we're really providing what they need for their specific situations. Good. Sounds like you've taken, you know, used your time wisely. Right. Uh, what have you learned and how will you apply this learning to what you're going to do in the future? Well, one big change is that, uh, uh, you know, rather than figuring on, on hopping on a plane and going and having face-to-face -face meetings, we're really needing to rely much more on working with people who can help us with introductions. And uh, uh, so that through those introductions, there's less of a need for the face-to-face. -face. We'll still do that, but less emphasis. And then another thing to be uh, very visible on the web so people can easily find us and to get as much information in a very uh, well communicated way to them to be available there. Uh, we also just can't 
rely as much as I think most businesses, uh, the, the global supply chain had been functioning remarkably well and, uh, you know, to source components from anywhere in the world and get them in in a reasonable amount of time. And uh, we're changing our, our, our sourcing to be far less reliant on overseas vendors, uh, especially China, uh, far less than we planned we would be a year ago. And finally, what would you do over again if you had the chance? Uh, moving the business at a different time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, this has been incredibly challenging, uh, which means having a young company, which is already challenging, it's just been even more so. I say that partly facetiously. I mean, we we would have done that no matter what, but uh, that has honestly that's been the, the the biggest challenge to to be right in the middle of starting to make that move with all the changes that have to go with that. And, and then throw all this with the COVID situation on top of it. Would love for that to have been different. You bet. You bet. Well, Tom, thank you again for joining us. And again, we are so happy that you're in our state. Well, thanks, Carla. You we are it. too. <laughs>